All right, it's BJ Balls, our comedy podcast. And today we've got a very special guest, Gavin Baskerville. If I pronounced it right? You have indeed got it right first time. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's not as hard as your last name, Benny. Oh, jeez, man. You didn't even introduce me before. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big boy. You can speak for yourself. Yeah, uh, how are you, Gavin? How's, uh, how's lockdown been treating you? Uh, okay, I guess we're uh, we're coping. I'm still here, so um, yeah, it's it's unusual, that's for sure. Certainly, without uh, without comedy in the life is uh, is pretty crazy. But it's uh, you know, all things considered, I'm I'm doing all right. We're we're healthy and well, and we're not going broke just yet. So oh, you know, talk to me in another month, maybe I'll be crawling <laughs> up the walls. At the moment, at the moment, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, very good. What's the uh? What, what's what's your estimated time for uh, getting things back to normal for the, uh, the comedy scene in Tassie? We've been um, discussing that a lot, obviously. That's sort of the main priority with everything. But uh, at the moment, it's really not looking encouraging. Um, for us, um, we're so dependent on bringing acts in as well. So until borders, the restrictions are lifted, it's it's kind of redundant anyway so we're uh, yeah we're, we're not expecting for anything certainly not before august um if 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 that if we're lucky we're probably just going to have to do you know maybe a couple of special events through the year and then um hopefully go back to weekly next year if we're if, you know all things going well because we don't even know what's happening with the airlines either so uh, yeah it's all pretty pretty crazy at the moment so um, yeah it's point. been it's been a very big shake up for us and it's uh yeah it's certainly you know uh, thrown a, a pretty massive spanner in the works but uh, you know getting people together I don't know you know if they bring uh, 10 people in at a time well that's you know some weeks we've, that's all the audience we've had so it's uh, maybe we can uh, socially distance them I'm not sure yeah it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's all up in up in the air literally and we're just uh, we're just going to just got to take each day as it comes and make the decisions as it happens unfortunately so uh, yeah I guess cool. you guys, it sounds like it's the same situation everywhere. So I've seen some yeah. interesting things happening around the place other than the online. Uh, one of my mates in uh, Dublin, uh, they did a, a, a performance to a block of flats. They were sort of set up down at the bottom in the, in the sort of quadrangle of the, of the uh, flats, you know, the units and, uh, and did a show down there with a big... So I oh, don't wow. know how that... Yeah, I don't know. I've got to talk to him and find out how it actually all went. But uh, the clips look good, but I wonder about heckling and, and uh, distractions <laughs> and garbage trucks and things that might have come through. I don't... You know, you have enough distractions in a pub. I don't know about performing to a block of flats. Certainly not, you know, yeah, in Australia. <laughs> I don't I mean, imagine that would end very well. No, I mean, if someone got upset and they said, oh, you can't say that. Like, oh, I'll go home. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Why, why'd you come out tonight? I didn't. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, there must be some licensing on that. Who knows? But, yeah, I don't know. Very strange. So, so yeah, we, so people are trying different things, you know, and there's talk of uh, a drive-in type setup. With, with something I sort of contemplated a while ago, I said to my wife, oh, maybe we could do it, like, set up like a drive-in with cars and stuff. But then they're sort of thinking, well, you can't hear people laugh. They'd have to start honking their horns. And then, of course, the neighbour's <laughs> going to complain. And, you know, it's just, and remember the old days, I don't know if you guys, you're probably too young to remember drive-ins, but you people used to flash the headlights at the screen and ruin the movie. So I'd Aww. imagine that it'd be, be, it could be all sorts of problems. But, you know, I guess we're just going to have to do whatever we can do to you can just hold, hold signs out the window. Ha, ha, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had, uh, I was talking to somebody about, uh, you know, even just the webcam stuff and it's 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 not interactive enough, you know, it doesn't really, no. I don't really like the Zoom stuff, um, but they were sort of saying, oh, you need a, a system where it has like a canned laughter built in so when you hit a button, it would at least sort of generate <laughs> laughter through the thing, which is kind of cool, you know, it's like the... I sort of said, but it does start getting a little bit too much like cam girls where you've got to wait for the response to come up on the <laughs> <laughs> don't know we're quite there yet. Oh, yeah. shit. We're not quite that desperate yet, but you never know. I'm not starting this next joke till I get at least $100. And yeah, three, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And five I'll laughs. Give you the punch, yeah. Do the setup and then go, okay, if you want to hear the punchline. <laughs> okay. I, need the, I need this bar raised to here. Come on, boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. It might just oh, happen. Who knows? No, I'd be down for that. That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> it has to, be, has, has to be in a bedroom set up, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's 100% out on the bed. The bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Has, 100%. And the background noise of the change. Cha -ching, cha -ching. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Jeez, more. Oh, Jesus. No, that'd be good. I wasn't expecting that to go there. But... So, how, um, 
So not, you, not, not that we're condoning any, uh, you know, any of that sort of uh, video shit that we watch any of this. I don't anyway, personally. I don't, I don't know what we're talking about. No, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, look, I, I have no shame in saying I've, I've pretty much clocked most of the major porn <laughs> sites, but yeah. No. Can girls do nothing? It's the same strippers. It's there, but you can't do anything about it. So who gives a shit? But uh, they're making money. If I had the body, I'd be doing it. So all the power to them. Uh, anyone can make money from home these days. You're doing something right. So yeah. power, power to the ladies. Uh, now you run uh, Joker's Comedy Club. Yes. Yes. How long? How long have you been running that for? Oh well. <laughs> Funnily enough, ne- uh, not next week, the week Wednesday after would have been our fifth birthday. So, oh, no. uh, oh, yeah, no. we were gearing up for a big, you know, celebration show, special guests, all that sort of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, all this happened. So that's kind of undermined us. So uh, we had, the, the most frustrating thing was we had never cancelled a show, which for in Hobart to have any, you know, never have to cancel is pretty amazing. Every week we'd gone, you know, 51, 50, yeah, 51 weeks of the year. And oh, then this wow. came along and it was the first time we had to cancel. So we missed out on our uh, 200th show and our birthday shows we're going to have to miss out on too. So we'll have to do our sixth birthday, I guess, and make a big deal out of that. But, uh, no, no you, you, can do a, you, can, you can do a catch up. Yeah, we will. Well, sure, we'll you can do a catch up. Well, the, well the, the, at least the 200th show will still happen somewhere down the track. We just don't yeah. know when, probably 2023 at this stage. But anyway, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Oh man, that sucks. I'm really, really sorry to does, hear that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty disappointing. So, uh, but you know, like I said, everybody's in the same boat, so we can't complain too much. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no, true. How, how do you, how do you find? Right, okay, let's let's take it back. Uh, uh, Where did I, 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 I don't even know how long we've been in ISO for, but you know, like let's take it back a few months uh, to what was you know normal running of things. Like, how how'd you find running it? Um, it was it was a pretty full on job, especially being weekly and having to fly acts in every week. So um, we were, you know, there was a lot of jet star flights being booked and a lot of accommodation and all that sort of stuff. So there's a whole extra level of um, organisation which went on top of it. But uh, we had it down to a pretty fine uh, fine art. My wife does a lot of the uh, back end stuff as well with the um, the rostering of the crew and the the finances and stuff. And then I'd sort of deal with the tech and the lineups and all that sort of stuff. And then host the show, obviously, too, because we can't afford to. <laughs> Have pay an MC separately. <laughs> yeah, no, um, we're running on <laughs> we're running on a on a pretty fine budget, as you know, most comedy clubs do. So, which is the other problem, you know, if, if even if flight costs go up a little bit, that's going to kind of mess us up a lot. So, you, you know, you're running on a on a shoestring on that front. But um, yeah, it's it's a lot of work, but it was good. We had we've got a really good team. One of the things that I made sure when I started the room. Uh, was that we had a team of people, so it wasn't just reliant on me or my wife to to run it. Because um, you know, some weeks you can't be there, or you you want to go on holiday, and, and you need people to be able to run it. So we had a, a good crew. And I meant paying, you know, obviously that boosts the budget a bit to have to pay people, but it was totally worth it because they're an excellent crew of um, people. Some comedians, some others who um, help us run. You know, they do room managing and audio and man the door and all that sort of stuff so it's it's really good to um to have that crew so it, to feel comfortable that if i'm not there it still will go ahead and and be good at a bit high quality so yeah oh, it's, it's brilliant. A, yeah it's definitely worth it you know i've uh, run things on and off over the years and yeah if you make yourself too indispensable it's uh, it's pretty exhausting <laughs> to, yeah, you can understand that yeah and you can't tool yourself either and you can't yeah you just have to be there but um Oh, that's good. Well, I, re- I really hope things kick back to normal. I can't do anything else. So that was the thing. I, I used to have a day job years ago as a, as a video editor um, on, on uh, news and stuff. And, and even those jobs had sort of all gone. And as that all disappeared, oh, wow. I was working with the ABC when that all got cut back. So I kind of ended up going, oh, well, all I've got left is the comedy. And I thought, oh, well, I'll... <laughs> I'll make a thing and now it's like oh now they've taken that away from me too okay no worries <laughs> we'll be fine we'll be fine oh I hope so <laughs> <laughs> that's brutal I love Tassie it's a great place it's um yeah <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have like um you know like uh, a, a regular uh, following people who come down like you know they'll make the trip from Launceston or something like that every week kind of thing or um, we've got a reasonably good local scene for a small place. We, uh, I call it a cottage industry because it's kind of, you know, it's small, but uh, 
um, quite punches above its weight, I think, for a small scene. Um, and we've got a bunch of comics and quite a lot of them up in the north. Um, so, yeah, we use uh, a bit of that. We try and cycle them through. But even that, there's not that many. So, you know, when we're weekly, uh, we run out pretty quick. Um, the, the cycle comes around fairly quickly. But, um, um, yeah, the, but bringing acts in, again, being a small town, we don't always, um, we can't, if they're not really well known, we can't afford to put them on for more than one night anyway, because there's just not yeah. the audience for it. So we're kind of, yeah. um, most of the time they're just coming down for the one night, fly in, fly out. And that's actually ended up being cheaper sometimes to, you know, they stay overnight and then fly out again than trying to line up extra gigs and stay those extra nights. Because it's rare to be able to get the nights to line up you know, yeah. subsequently, so that you're not having dead nights, because as soon as you've got a dead night, there's accommodation costs and that whole thing falls apart. So, yeah, it's um, it's all, yeah, like I said, a delicate balance. But I was hoping to one day, you know, have a point where there's a, a proper touring run um, and uh, enough good gigs to sort of make a trip worthwhile for people to come down. So, you know, maybe one day it'll still happen. And like I said, I was, I was starting to feel like we were getting there. <laughs> it's oh. just been such a major setback. So. Well, it, it, at least that's something to look forward to. Any 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 Australian comics and Tassie yeah. comics who might be listening to this, that's something to look forward to. Hopefully, in the not too distant future. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep, yeah keep, your, keep yourselves uninfected, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe they'll let you in. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see when they're actually opening borders. Um, I've got no idea, but yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I guess it all. Who knows? It's, it'll, yeah, it could be second waves. There could be all that sort of stuff. And that's the other thing we've got to we've got to prepare for anything that could happen. Because even if we come back, um, if we come back too soon and there's a second wave, I mean, some people are predicting that there'd be a second wave around September, October. So if something, you know, like that's you're just starting to get momentum again, then it all falls over, and it's oh, like, wow. oh, you know. So it's, um, I mean, it may not happen, but you've got to kind of prep for that just in case, so that possibly it'll, um, you know. Um, Yes, yeah, so we've got we've got at the moment we've got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan T, and we're yeah, just going to have to um, activate whichever plan is uh, doable when, once we know. Oh, scary, scary, strange times. Mm. Now moving on to your comedy, how did you get started? I, I I did a little bit of research the other day and uh, saw that you did uh, Raw with the buddy of mine, Chris Winehouse. Yes. Back in the day. Yeah, how did that very, go back for the, you? Very, very long time ago. Yeah, that was, yeah, 1999. I was uh, in Perth uh, back then. That's why I grew up in Perth. Okay. Um, so, um, and uh, yeah, I entered the Raw Comedy competition just on a bit of a whim of, you know, something I sort of wanted to do. And I, I never actually thought there was enough alcohol in the world to convince me to, that I could be funny. <laughs> but it turned out there was. And, uh, <laughs> I, um, I yeah I, I I was I was pretty hammered, but it, it went all right. The adrenaline was enough to override it, and um, somehow I did okay. And um, yeah, so the, the my third gig was at the Melbourne Town Hall in front yeah, of the fifteen hundred wow. people with, up against Dan Doe and Chris Winehouse. So <laughs> wait, was, so, uh, wait, so you were smashed for that gig that got recorded? You what? Sorry, were, were, were you drunk for that gig? No, not for that one. Oh, no, okay, no, okay. No, for the for the Perth heats, I did two two gigs in Perth. I was about to say, geez, you hold yourself well when you're smashed. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of did. That was the weird thing because the adrenaline was so full on. I actually was quite sober, <laughs> you know, like I appeared but quite sober. Um, like I said, I wasn't drunk on that particular show, but um, but yeah, what happened was a few gigs in. Um, as your body as it costs, you know, gets so used to the adrenaline, um, it didn't kick in, and I was very drunk, and, and I had a terrible <laughs> kick that night. Where I was like, "I need this alcohol to get on stage." That's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. So, so, that was a valuable lesson learned very quickly. So, <laughs> no, very good. <laughs> yeah, Dutch courage. Yeah, well, we all need it sometimes. There's yeah. no, no shame in that. But <laughs> so, what 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 do you reckon would be a highlight of your career thus far? Um, I've had a lot of, I've been pretty lucky. I've had some really good uh, good gigs. I think, um, I mean, the one I, that usually stands out for me was uh, I got to support Weird Al Yankovic when he came to Tassie oh, wow. um, uh, probably 10 years ago. And that, yeah, that was pretty mind blowing because I've been a big fan growing up and, uh, um, you know, playing a massive room there that was like 1,700 people or something. And uh, yeah, that was that was pretty amazing. So that would have to be a um, right up there, I think. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've, I've been pretty lucky a few sort of theatre gigs like that and support gigs and things. Yeah, it's usually good fun. Um, you know, done some gigs into, um, in Ireland and stuff, which were good fun too. So yeah, I don't know. It's um, hard to say, really. <laughs> yeah. 
Did, did you have to change up the material much to do Ireland or? Uh, not as much as, as I thought. That was actually not too bad because uh, the Irish are great because they've got the same sort of level of cynicism uh, which underpins their, their, men, you know, their sort of philosophies and, and um, a lot of my stuff's sort of fairly cynical so it, it, it fit in pretty well. Others, you know, local references that had to change. But um, yeah, a lot more of it worked than I thought which was kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I like the Irish. They're good fun. <laughs> but they know how to yeah how to have a good time. So um, yeah, that was fine. That was fine. Oh, very good. Now, Benny, do you want to ask a question that uh, we 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 love asking most? Yeah, so these, uh, what's your worst ever <laughs> bomb? Like the worst ever bomb. The worst um, ever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, this this one was pretty horrendous. Um, and uh, as you, you're probably aware, like when I when, when I came to Tassie, I thought, oh, this will be great because I'll be able to do heaps of corporate gigs because it'll be, you know, I'll be the only one that can, you know, with the level with enough experience to do the corporate gigs. And but of course, as you know, corporate gigs are invariably horrible. They're badly set up, and you know, the sound doesn't work, and you know, all that sort of shit. Everything goes wrong. Um, so I stupidly agreed to a gig. It was sold to me as an awards night uh, with dignitaries present. Oh, and there was going to be a jazz band playing before me. <laughs> um, and it was in a place called Bothwell, which is in the middle of Tasmania. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, the clue that it probably wasn't going to go so well, and I should have known this, was it was for the Tasmanian Shooters Association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, it was sold to me as an awards night and the minister was going to be there and there was going to be a jazz play, band playing before me. And all that. so I thought, thinking, well, okay, maybe this is something that's you know not what i you know think it is so uh so i they, they made me wear a suit i turned up in my suit and uh, i i specifically asked them though because i'd had a whole lot of bad gigs where you know they had bad lighting on stage or and i said look i need to make sure that the stage is lit and that we've got a microphone and yet yeah, that's all fine that'll be sorted so i drive all the way out to, to bothwell uh and arrive at the venue and it's basically a school gym a high school gym oh. um and I'm, I'm the only, like one of the only people in the suit. The only the other people in the suits were the jazz duo and the minister. And everybody else is just in flannelette. And there's kids running around. Uh, there's deer heads mounted on the wall. It's like just, you know, everything you could just think. And I'm thinking, oh, this is just going to be horrible. I went and spoke to the jazz guys and they were like really struggling <laughs> playing in the corner. There was like a, a, a stage set up in this corner. Oh, and the lighting, of course, the whole room was lit. So it was just the basketball lighting. Oh. Was, yeah, that was the thing. And I had a lectern with a deer head mounted on the front of that as well. And, uh, and they, oh God. And so I'm thinking, oh, this is just going to be bad. What am I going to do? I, I'll just do my bit and get out of there. So eventually they they introduced me and I, it has burnt into my brain and this is exactly how the intro went i had it recorded for a while i don't know what i did with it <laughs> this, was, this was the exact intro the guy got up behind the lectern okay bit of shush a bit of shush a bit of shush there's people up at the buffet there's kids running around you know it's just a huge hall of just people not giving a fuck and the and then he says uh bit of shush right We've uh, got some entertainment now. I'll uh, leave you with uh, Gavin Baskerville. That was it. That was literally the intro. <laughs> Silence as I walk up on stage in my suit and uh, tried to tell jokes um, to this audience. Oh. Um, and, and yeah, it was it was pretty bad. So. The, it was back in the when the global financial crisis was on, so I don't know what the two thousand and eight yep. or whatever it was, and uh, and I had this stupid joke, and it was just uh, you know, oh, how are you getting on with the global financial crisis or the GFC as it's known, you know, but I don't know what the Geelong Football Club's got to do with it. Ha, ha. <laughs> Shitty joke, right? Yeah. Shitty joke. A couple of people laughed, but that was met with a guy in the audience going. Geelong, no, the Eagles, no, Geelong. Oh, like, no. Like, and I'm just like, oh, man. Um, and they were getting really you know, just horrible. So I just played as best I could. I just did my time. And, uh, you know, it was funny because I was going in, everybody was going, oh, you know, Tasmanian Shooters Association, oh, don't get shot. Um, <laughs> but, but about halfway through that gig, I was going, somebody put a bullet through my head, right? Just <laughs> shoot me. <laughs> 
if a red dot had appeared on my forehead, I would have been quite happy. <laughs> it was just, it was hell. So yeah, that was that was absolutely the worst and most memorable uh, one. I and, then, and, then, and even worse, like you just had that. Like, and I got booed as I was leaving the stage a whole bit. Like it was just horrible. Oh shit! And then, um, and I and it was like a two-hour drive home. So it was like just on my own. <laughs> It was just horrible. It was just horrible. So yeah, that was that was not a good one. <laughs> so I, then, I, I stopped doing corporates now. Now when the, the guy reads, I'm not. Nah, not not. <laughs> they're, just, they're just too too bad. So. I think I think a long drive home after your bomb is like the adult comedian equivalent of when you were a kid and your parents like go stand in the corner and think yeah. about what you did. Like you just can't help but like fuck. Why did I say that? Why didn't I start with this or what? It's the drive of shame, yeah. It is. (laughs) Well, you just stuck with you. (laughs) (laughs) Just so bad. (laughs) Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, Yeah, so that was it. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, you've got to have one story. You've got to have a gig like that somewhere, don't you? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But but the thing that annoyed me most, I think, was because I was always a a big believer in choosing my battles. So through my career, you know, there was a lot of rooms I wouldn't play, you know, people go, oh, I'll do this room and it's like, and it was just a, it was a terrible gig. So I wouldn't do it. I'd only do gigs that I thought were, you know, at least they're going to be listening or paying yeah. attention. Cause this is, for me, there was no point doing a, a, a gig to an audience that didn't want to listen, you know, like I, I, I never really saw the value in that. Um, so um, yeah, so I was always very careful about the gigs I chose. And then for this one to come up was just, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> You know, and again, it's that classic thing. It's like, oh, the money. I'll take the money. It's like, oh, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but at what cost? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah, that's it. You're just selling your, 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 your <laughs> dignity, to, you know. So, oh, well. <laughs> so I can't return. I can never return to Bothwell. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, well, but, but weirdly, the stupid bit was we'd actually had a gig uh, up that way uh, in Bothwell. We did a gig uh, through one of the comics who used to live up there um, a couple of years before that. And it was great. We had a great time. So I was thinking, oh, well, you know, that was, it was fine. Country Town gigs, good fun. It was, bit, it was just everything was wrong. With it. It was just the wrong audience completely. Well, the jazz band could have helped you out at least. Oh, I think they were just ducking for cover. They were just pleased that they weren't playing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. But like if they... You know, if if they could tell people weren't listening and you you hit an absolute doozy of a joke, they could have done it. Well, they didn't even have they didn't even have drum, unfortunately. It was they just said it was a duo. They just had uh, you know, um, what were they playing? I can't remember. They they had double bass, I think, and a um, yeah, guitar or something. But yeah, it was (laughs) oh piano. That's right, piano and a bass, double bass. So yeah, they couldn't even (laughs) do that. They could have done a piano. I don't know. Probably I think be able to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> Fuck. Uh, it was it was horrible. So how'd you bounce back from that? Was, was it kind of a okay? This is a corporate gig. That's not a normal gig. You know, a I, little I bit I'm of that sort it, of thing. Yeah, it was a little bit of that, but it was also it was a bit hard because back then too there wasn't many gigs in Tassie at all. Like, so I'd be lucky if I'd get a gig once every couple of months anyway because it just wasn't the gigs around. So oh, wow. it did take a while to uh, to be able to get up and do something again to feel you know. Um, okay about it but yeah it did it did knock me around a bit and i started questioning what was i doing <laughs> so that's i think oh, that's no. the only time i've been, like literally been booed so that was that was horrible <laughs> is, is there is there an open mic scene up there now like i mean there, yeah there is an open mic scene in hobart and um yeah it's it's it runs but most of the rooms are monthly so um they don't sort of run so it's still for acts they're really only getting you know they're lucky if they can get up you know, twice a month, probably they're lucky if they can do that because there's just not enough um, stage time, unfortunately, which makes it really hard for them to accelerate and get, you know, get game fit. Um, and then, of course, once they get good, they all piss off to Melbourne anyway. So we, you know, it's uh, there's always a bit of a, a, a talent drain on that front. But um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty good, it's a really supportive scene, and they work really hard, and um, you know, they try to, uh, you know do as much as they can and set up as many gigs as they can but um you know but the audience down here too they're not they just still don't really know what a comedy night is i mean when i started my room it was the first weekly comedy night and and it, people don't really understand what a comedy club is as opposed to going to the theater or to the casino to see a big name act so it's taken a very long time to shift that mentality of um, what it is we're actually doing when they come of course they love it but if yeah. they don't know what it is it's it's hard to it's a hard thing to sell if they're not familiar with what yeah but you've what done well i mean over five years i mean that's pretty 
bloody good. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's it's uh, not a huge amount of time, but it's uh, it, it is for, for Tassie to have a weekly show. And, you know, I think our smallest crowd was like 13, but most of the time it averaged between 20 and 30 and, you know, and big crowds up to 120 with a big name. So it was um, a good... Um, you know, a, 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 a success on that front. Because when we started and said we were going to go weekly, everybody said, no, you can't do that. That's not going to work. But, um, you know, we, we survived a long time before. Like I said, COVID was the thing that knocked us out. So that was interesting. So, um, yeah, we did pretty well. Oh, it's very impressive. It's, it's a lovely room as well. I um, I put on a private show when I was down in Tassie last um, for my dad's uh, old cricket club. Mm. They had like 30 of them coming down and my dad's like, Come down and join us. You know him. I was like, yeah, all right. He goes, find a gig while you're down here. I was like, uh, I don't know anyone. And he goes, no, no, organize some comics and put on a show. I was like, ah, uh, okay. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful room. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, it's it's a, a really it, nice room. It's a, it's a crazily good room. That's one of the reasons we started it. When I, I found it by, it's not by accident so much. But what happened was the local comics were sort of talking about, oh, we need more rooms. And I, you know, I sat down with them all and said, okay, well, why don't we do a bit of a stock take and see what venues are actually out there and we'll do that. Um, and of course, they're all lazy, so nobody did anything. So I said, well, okay, I'll go and look at some <laughs> venues. And um, this was, it was the second venue I went into. And so um, it's a, an old Polish club. Um, yeah. And uh, so in the nature of those sort of, uh, clubs, the, the older generation are dying out and the young ones aren't as interested in, you know, being the Polish Association sort of thing. So the club was sort of laying a bit dormant. Um, but the layout is just perfect. We've got the stage up one end. It's big enough for 120 people. We've got a green room. There's a bar at the back. Like it's, as a comedy room, it's absolutely perfect. There's no distractions. It's like a little mini theatre. Um, so when I saw it, I just went, oh, I'm not giving this to anybody else. And I yeah. went home and said to my wife, hey, I'm thinking of starting a comedy club. I'm thinking of going weekly. She's like, what are you talking about? But we kind of we were able to sort of help save the club basically because they were literally looking at closing the doors. So we oh, wow. gave them something to be have the doors open every week, which um, made a big difference. So they love us and, uh, it, you know, they're very supportive of us. And especially, you know, now while things are, are not good, they're, they're happy to wait till we're back and stuff. So we're very lucky. I mean, and they, you know, finding a good venue is just, that's, you know, panning for gold these days. It's, yeah. you know, you often find venues that are, um, the good space for comedy, but then the manager will be useless or they won't help you. You know what I mean? Like they're just, it's just in yeah. And then you'll find another place where the manager's brilliant, and really supportive, and but the space is just not not right. And that's what I've had run venues, venues like that before where the space, you know, we just had to compromise the show so much for the yeah. venue. And it sort of worked, but it was, you know, there was just limitations, which eventually, um, you know, I had to bring all the gear in all the time. Whereas with uh, Jokers, the gear stays in place. And I just pretty much come in, takes about five minutes to get it up and running and stuff, which is a huge thing. Not having, oh, to, pull, yeah. not having to pull stages down and and, uh, yeah, <laughs> and pack up lights and load the van up at the end of the night, which is such a buzzkill. You know, you have a good gig, you, you know, and then you come off and then it's like, all right, pack it all up and pull it all down. And it's like, oh, it's such a buzzkill. You mean I've got to do exercise now? Now that isn't fucking a groupie what is this exactly yeah, no, it's exactly. just not the yeah. same yeah. it's not the same yeah. but no it's a, it's a lovely room the people there were lovely when i came down thank um, you. you you were absolutely on this boy you have been on to something for a while but yeah that's the hardest thing about running a room it's like getting it's getting the three main things like getting the idea heard and what you want to do and getting that night you want and all that sort of stuff and then having the manager or owner actually on side who will be you know, proactive and listen and be like, you need that? Okay, here it is. Like that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. There's nothing worse than like someone, you know, being like, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. We can do that. You can have this night, blah, blah, blah. And then you ask for certain things like, yeah, no, we can't afford that. Or, yeah. You know, or just... And they just start getting in the way and they cause problems. Yeah. You, you turn up to do your show and they're like, oh, we've got a private function on tonight or, you know, oh man, <laughs> just all that stuff. So, yeah, we're, we're very lucky we <laughs> found somewhere good. But yeah, yeah. it is, it's... Um, it's uh, it's absolutely vital having all those things in place, and that yeah, you can't. Um, and like I said, even having a decent crew of people that are, that will support it and make it work, because it is very very tiring work. People think, oh, I'll just put on a gig, it'll be good. But the other thing too, a big factor in a place like Hobart too, we we couldn't afford to put on a, a, a bad night because if it wasn't good, people wouldn't come back. They yeah. might try it once, but they won't come back. And that's something I have to sort of harp on with the, the locals doing their open mic nights. I have to keep saying to them, you just, you've got to make sure that it's at least half decent night because people won't come back. If they see that, they'll go, oh, I've seen comedy and it's crap and they won't come back to yeah. anything. So it's really, in a small place, that word's mouth's going to spread much faster than, you know, 
good word of mouth. So um, that's a that's a big part of any night you're doing. You can't afford to have a dud night, and we worked really hard to do that. And I'm happy to say that you know, out of all the shows we did, um, we never had a night that was you know horrible, which is. Um, it took a lot of work to get that, but it, it's vital because, like I said, if, you, if you're only getting 20 people showing up, the last thing you want is half of them to go, oh, well, that was terrible and not come back. So, um, yeah, that trust is really important. You've got to keep a certain level of quality up for sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So for anyone interested in coming down to Tassie, where would uh, the first port of call be? Like, where, where's the open mic? To jump uh, on so, like I said, most of the rooms run monthly, um, and I'm not really sure what's going to happen when we come back out. What's going to still oh, be running course. and yeah. what's going to go on? So, um, but uh, I mean, they, you know, they could just use Facebook, get in touch. We've got the, there's the Hobart uh, comedy page, and there's uh, you know um, the Tasmanian comedians group as well. So, um, yeah, just jump on those, and, and they'll let you know what's going on. I know the, the guys up north. There's, there's pro- I think there's actually more happening up in Launceston and uh, at the moment than there is in Hobart. But um, it, like I said, that shifts and changes all the time. So um, rooms will come and go a bit as they uh, all those things we talked about. You know, a venue will start up and then it'll <laughs> fall over, yeah. and then the other ones will come back, or they change, you know, management or all that sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, absolutely get in touch, and hopefully we can. Find- I mean, the biggest problem, of course, is having to come down. It's not like getting in your car. You've got to, you know, it's quite. A, it can be expensive to come down. So, you know, if you're coming for a holiday uh, anyway, then uh, by all means get in touch. Yeah. And- <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't recommend coming, but you know, making a special trip if you need the money because it's uh, yeah, there's no there's no money in it, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah, but one day, one day, hopefully, it'll be a little utopia of a, of a touring zone where the, you can make some bucks. But uh, I think we're a little out of that yet. Uh, yeah, same same with Melbourne, unfortunately. Well, that's it. Mm. Yeah, well, Melbourne's got like that. I haven't done a gig in Melbourne for I can't even remember the last one I did because yeah, there's I can't afford to. If I come up and stay overnight and stuff, it's like I'll be out of pocket. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Sydney was bad. Now Sydney, I was at least able to break even, but I couldn't even work out how to break even in Melbourne. It's crazy. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Bloody Melbourne. There's so many good rooms, but yes. yeah, it's just yeah. um, it's um, there's no money. But but then you know, <laughs> but then but then Melbourne doesn't need you know interstate idiots like me turning up. You got enough money. You know, you got enough comics. So you know, you don't need. Oh no, I wouldn't say that. There's a few people who. <laughs> I'm not shitting on anyone, but, you know, there's a few rooms that have a staple of, you know, these five or six comics. So if you go there, you're going to see at least three of those people every week sort of thing. It gets yeah. boring. Yeah, what? but I mean, yeah, and, and that's mixed because those, those guys, obviously, you've got to create that work and they've got to keep doing that to get good. So it's, it's, it is a fine balance. And, you know, it's the same problem we have here. It's like we, we, could, we could do that and we could give people a lot more stage time, but then, yeah, what, what, what's it going to end up being? people stop coming because they see the same acts all the time and yeah it's 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 a very weird type right tight rope to uh to walk along and, and not fall off <laughs> no definitely well me, me and benny are keen to come down at some stage but we yeah just need a... well hopefully well <laughs> benny benny doesn't go well on planes he gets real shitty so i might come oh, okay. separate <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! You've got a bit about that. I'm allowed to say that. I'm not. Uh, I'm, not I'm not taking the piss. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you can come on the boat. The boat will probably be operating before the planes, anyway. But um, the oh, yeah. uh, but th- that of course comes in Devonport. So then you've got to come down. We're all the way down the other end of the state. So you got to. I don't uh, trust. Make it, your way I don't down. trust any boats anymore after the print. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Oh. No, not jumping on any boat. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how, how good a swimmer are you? <laughs> Backstrap, I don't know. I'm probably we'll be <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'll take the plane. But <laughs> no, I've got my, uh, my 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 dad and my my step family live down there, so I'm I'm, I'm keen to get down regardless. That, that, but, um, that's the way, that's the way to do it. Come visit some family and <laughs> friends yeah. and stuff, and then uh, yeah. and then jump up. But yeah, I mean, it's always great to see new acts. And you know, one of the things about Joker's when I set it up was about bringing acts that people hadn't seen because, of course, they they'd see the big names and on telly and they'd go to the theatre, as it said, um, and we really wanted to sort of showcase uh, that sort of mid-tier of acts that are, you know, the amazing comedians, as you know, that are uh, out there that people don't necessarily know of. And um, so that was, and our, and our regulars really loved that. They, they, you know, a lot of them would, didn't even bother looking up who was on. They'd just come and know that we had a, a they'd get to see something that they hadn't seen before. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Then uh, it's hard, it's hard to sell that though. You say, hey, come see people you haven't heard of. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's not the, but it's we the best. promise it'll be good. Yeah, yeah. well, that's yeah. it. And, and, but it's hard to, it's hard to sort of bundle that up in a, in a good, uh, 
advertising slogans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd take a few marketing teams to get that one sorted. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So from what it sounds like, you've kind of got that midway room, which is kind of like mine in Chapel Street, where it's not open mic, but it's you know the people who you sh- you will be seeing coming up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Think, yeah, absolutely. And that, and yeah. that was that was part of it too. Was um, you know, and even for the locals, they know they've that I won't just put them on for the sake of putting them on. They've got to have proven themselves a bit because um, it a it gives people something to work towards. I think that's yeah. really important. And I know when I was starting out, that was a big motivator for me. There were certain rooms that I wanted to do, and I knew I had to get so good to do it. So um, I think that's really a really good motivator. Um, but also too, the other factor was in order because we were flying people in, we had to charge. A reasonable price at the door and we're charging $25 so it's like well we've got to give them $25 worth of value so yep. the, the the people coming need to know that they're going to get last that's that's the point so um yeah we couldn't open mic was it wasn't really something we could we could sell you know and make viable at, at, at that sort of price so and there's like I said enough rooms running around um where they they could do that the stuff and work their way up um <laughs> you know to cut their teeth yeah. on and and you know those sort of tougher rooms are um you know they learn all the skills of how to play hard rooms and stuff. So hopefully by the time they come to Jokers, they've got a good attentive audience and it's a, it's a fun gig to do. You get, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think the scene needs any more open mics. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, well, but see, this is why we're torn down here because we, we kind of, we need them on some levels because we need to get more comics and we need to get people skilled up. Um, but, um, but yeah, at the same time, it, it, it can be so, horrific <laughs> that you can't, I can't I can't go I mean they want me you know often they, they fair enough that a lot of the time the, the the younger comics are saying oh can you come down and you know support the room and be seen to be hanging out and I completely understand that they need that support but 20 years man I can't I can't keep watching it I can't you know what I mean like I just I've seen enough open mic to last me yeah. 10 lifetimes I don't I just can't sit through it anymore <laughs> you know it's just <laughs> It sounds yeah. horrible, but it just, it really no. is. I, I've, I've never got off on watching people die. So uh, I, just, <laughs> I, still, I, still, I still cringe. I still curl up in a ball. Like my wife, if she's ever with me, she's like nudging me to go stop because of my face. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> it's so bad. I've never, never known how to get, you know, deal with that. <laughs> I, had, I had a bit of that at the, uh, the Raw final I went to last time. <laughs> it was fucking horrible. Like, oh, it is. The people who went well were really good, but just some of them were just like, "Have you ever seen comedy before? Why are you oh, Why are you saying that?" This like, is what this is what just does my head. I mean, I run workshops as well, and um, and part of the what I do with the workshops, I, I, I say to them, "It's not about me making uh, you funny, but what I can do is teach you how not to suck." Yeah. You know, because because if you can get through five minutes without sucking and not boring the audience, then you 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 know that's that's the first win. So, um, and it's all the same stuff that you just see done over and over again, the same mistakes made over and over again. It's like, well, avoid that, and you're halfway there. Like it's not that hard. <laughs> Why aren't they looking and going? Well, that didn't work. Maybe I won't start by talking about the giant crap I took this morning. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I'd love to start a sentence with a. Uh, so I'm a straight white male. Yeah. <laughs> just see how it goes i think there'd be only certain rooms you could do that in but um, yeah. <laughs> so for, for anyone interested in getting in contact with the uh uh with with the one-on-ones so i, I did see the ad for the other day but you're, you're going to be able to explain it better um what's the go how do people get in contact how do people sign up uh yeah well uh, so i've got two i've got some uh four week courses happening online now i've had to take them online normally i'd do them in person obviously but I've, i'm braving the zoom thing and uh, uh so i'm doing a sort of four week course uh, one started yesterday but another one starting on tuesday there's a couple of spots left for that um well this probably won't go to air. cut that out with it's not going to be <laughs> we're not going to be up on on air before that one comes in um so yeah, one-on-one tutoring. So I can do uh, you know um, Zoom meeting type stuff um, where we can talk, to, and I can customize it too. So if it, you know if you're a, never done comedy before and you're thinking of giving it a go, then I can talk you through that. Or if you're a bit more experienced and you want to sort of learn some joke writing stuff or things like that, because I do a lot of that. I'm, I'm I'm more a gag writer, I think, than a you know than a um, stand up and i mean i do obviously do stand up that's my thing but um it's uh my, my strength is in, in the writing side of it so uh, if there's uh if people want work help with that sort of stuff i can uh, i can do the, the workshops for them as well um but yeah whatever wherever you're at whatever you want to talk about i'm always happy to have a chat with people so yeah 
Beautiful. Um, and you can get in touch, sorry, you can get in touch through uh, my website's probably the easiest, uh, gavbaskerville.com uh, or just Google Gavin Baskerville, I'm pretty easy. Um, I used to be the only Gavin comedian, you used to be able to Google that, but now there's like four or five of the bastards <laughs> turned up and say, like, ah, you've taken my thing. <laughs> so I should have capitalised on it more while I was the only one, I didn't even think that. <laughs> so, uh, but um, yeah, I think Gavin Semple's beaten me on Google now, the bastard, so. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. Yeah. I had it all to myself for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can go on Australia's Got Talent next to see. Yeah, that's what it's better from it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he, he's raking in the gigs from that. So um, yeah, yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So yeah, so so look up Gavin Simple and then scroll down and down <laughs> and down. <laughs> You'll find me. I'm just look at the, the old guy, the old guy, maybe old Gavin. And why, why are you looking up Gavin Semple? You can see the roast battle I did with him. Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck, that was a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's three hours of my life I'll never get back. But, uh, it was fun. But no, very, very good. Well, I'm, I'm hoping things get back to Definitely. normal soon. We'd love to check back in with you uh, in a couple months' time when stuff gets back to normal. Yeah, and- cool. That'd be great. And if, there, if there's a way you can make it up to Melbourne on the cheap, my room's weekly and your open door policy. I'd love to have you on. So. Oh, thank you very much. So that would be very nice. It would be lovely to perform in Melbourne again. Like I said, it's, yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I lived there for uh, five years and I loved it and had a really good time. And so I miss it a lot. But uh, yeah, I just never get back there anymore. So it's no, it's a good place. So. There isn't much money going around in the shows, but... Uh, They're fun shows, yeah. You Sometimes you just yeah. do it for the gig. So There's, the, there's really something good. on every night, so there's no dead nights if you... That's amazing, yeah. Well, so that's a, yeah. that's a huge improvement. I mean, it, even when I was there, so I was there two thousand to two thousand and five, um, and and interestingly, you know, um, the well, the SB that used to run Sundays, Sunday afternoons, and Tuesday nights. So that was, you know, and that was yeah. the big night. So um, the fact that there's stuff on every night now is uh, is quite a huge change for for Melbourne. Yeah, it's really no, great. it's it's, it's really very great. good for for people who want to work hard. You can work hard. Uh, that's why I kind of don't really. Uh, see eye to eye with people like, oh, I'm trying hard to get gigs and I can't get any. Well, you're clearly not fucking looking hard enough. Yeah. Like, there's gigs everywhere. But um, yeah, but please re- reach out if you're if you're coming up and we'll, we'll make sure you're busy and we'd love to get you in the studio, which Benny's keeping warm. <laughs> nice work there, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking great I, studio. I, I, look, yeah. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Oh, very good. Well, thank right. you very much thank for your time, Gavin. Much. Cheers. Thanks for taking, having me. And, and I don't do podcasts very often, so thank you very much for uh, twisting my arm and making me come on. <laughs> there was no twisting of arms. There were no pot plants involved, I asked. Right, that's, <laughs> that's it. Couldn't have been more of a gentleman. But no, thank you very much, Kevin. A pleasure. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Beautiful. Thank cool. you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, yeah, yep. en- enjoy the uh, rest of the day and cut that up as you see fit. I don't know what, what was useful out of it. No, yeah. no, it was all very useful. Thank you very much. You're yeah. our first. Uh, yeah, you're our first Tassie comic. Ah, there you go. Oh, well, we might, might fix that to get you some others. <laughs> oh, no, ha- no, hang on. Oh, yeah, Chris no, Franklin. Um, well, Chris. Chris Franklin, but he moved down as well. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's he lives everywhere. He's a he's a um, citizen of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Oh fuck, I forgot about Chris Franklin for a second. Don't let that get out. Um, <laughs> but no, thank you very much for taking the time. Yeah, all the best, man. And we'll hopefully catch you somewhere sometime in person. Done. Cheers. Thanks, Kevin. Thank hey, you very much. Bye. Bye. Cheers.